patient who is having perfusion issues, do not give them nitroglycerin, because you're gonna make the tank too large, and if you don't have enough volume, you're gonna kill them. And, you know, that's a low SVR, right? High SVR is when you have hypertension, you have resistance, that, I think, is that your afterload? Afterload is what you're pushing out. So focus on that when you're studying those three things in your book. Look at your um, parent book, um, Not to interrupt too much, but all of the stuff on this slide is directly for like word for word. Yeah, so I went through the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so it's literally just like anything you want to look for, it's not going to explain it anymore. Like, yeah, see, it's clean the data because it's there. And what it is, they don't give you a lot. Okay, if she gives us like some full of questions to see how she's going to put it out. That would be helpful, but she didn't do that. I'll suggest yeah, you know, a bunch of values that we don't know what we're going to do. And then we like, could have a more high record and the writing in that session. Yeah. So I think she'll reply. Because she's not the key to that. I think she'll reply. Remember that hemodynamics and infection are linked. But I know you're not going to have your infection lecture until test four. But why don't you look at what Dr. Udo posted for infection and then see if you can make some connections with perfusion three through that avenue as well. Thank you. All right. Um, I may have to like scoot out through and use the bathroom, so. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll do my best. Remember we talked last week, we stopped at kidney stones. Um, to this week we're gonna cover acute kidney injury chronic kidney disease, and dialysis, and end stage, okay? So uh, a lot of this is repetition, so, and some of this is somehow linked to metabolism, but the piece that's missing with metabolism, with DI and SIADH is, you really don't, you don't have kidney failure. So there's some parallels, but when you have kidney failure in the mix, then you have all of these issues, okay? So try not to conflate the two, DIS and ADH and in kidney failure, because kidney failure piece is not in Ms. Sean's content, all right? Free renal reduction in blood flow, right? Intrarenal, anything that attacks the glomerulus directly inside the kidney. And I have a few more lists as we go along. Postrenal, any kind of obstruction to urine output. Stones, BPH, um, uterine tumors. GYN tumors can grow big enough in the abdomen to cause obstructions in other things. Constipation. Constipation, you know, you got a big full bowel. That's a problem with could obstruct post renal. It could also obstruct a peritoneal dialysis catheter, and we'll talk about that. Diagnostics, all the UA ultrasound, MRI, maybe a kidney biopsy if it's within the um, intravenal. Prognosis, remember, acute kidney injury patients recover from. Chronic kidney disease is a progressive decline. The oliguric phase of acute kidney injury mimics chronic kidney disease, and I'll go over that a couple of times, but then patients get better. Usually AKI only lasts maybe a few days up to a week. It could last a lot longer if the patient's debilitated, if the patient has other comorbidities going on, and AKI could turn into chronic kidney disease, but the likelihood of that depends on the patient. It's less likely, okay? So the patho, you have hypovolemia, decreased kidney blood flow leading to vasoconstriction. And then edema kicks in, Epithelial cells obstruct the tubules in the nephrons. Remember, you have that microcirculation in your glomerulus. And if that's blocked, then the nephrons start dying. Ischemia, 
when you have ischemia, those vessels, before they die, they become more permeable. So larger molecules like protein can transport across myoglobin molecules, which is a result of muscle fiber breakdown and rhabdomyolysis can pass through. And then you start seeing that in the kit in the urine. You see protein spilling. You see myoglobin, Coca-Cola colored urine. And I'll go over rhabdomyolysis in a minute. Glomerular well, capillary permeability is affected. The last two, the rifle classification and Kadoki, you don't have to know these, it's nice to know, okay? For those of you who are going into nephrology nursing, you may see this. The rifle classification is used by the National Kidney Foundation with guidelines, clinical practice guidelines, and also Kadoki. Those are nice to know. Don't worry about studying that. Okay. All right. So you're welcome to take a picture. <clears throat> this just shows you again visual of pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. Pre-renal is sudden and severe drop in blood pressure, maybe through shock, or an interruption of the blood flow from severe injury or illness. Intrarenal is direct damage to the kidneys by inflammation, toxins, drugs, infection. Don't worry about that reduced blood supply. That's more pre-renal. And then post-renal is an obstruction of urine flow due to an enlarged prostate, bladder problems, a blocked ureter leading to hydronephrosis, bladder tumor, GYN tumors, etc. All right, so let's go over some more specific conditions. So as you're studying, look at these um, pathophysiology disease processes. Think about how it affects kidney function and then take it a step further and develop what's my nursing care gonna be for this. You'll see a lot of overlap. <coughs> I think when I went through acid base, and if you, you know, one of, there's a lot of overlap between acid-base disturbance is similar to acute kidney injury. So hypovolemia, shock, reduced blood flow to the kidneys. Sepsis, you have a diminished peripheral vascular resistance. You're vasodilated. That's the incident I'm telling you. If you give them nitroglycerin, you'll kill them because you're just going to open the tank wider and wreck the perfusion. All right? Pulmonary embolism. That can reduce blood flow to the kidneys, kind of inadvertently, but liver failure, heart failure. Decrease, anything that decreases cardiac output. For instance, tamponade, anaphylaxis. Cardiac tamponade, and I think you learned when did Miss Alexis do inflammation? Mm -hmm. I mean, or, uh, pericarditis mm -hmm. inflammation? Mm -hmm. The pericardial sac fills up with fluid. It restricts the pumping action of the heart, and so you're not perfusing, and then the kidneys can shut down if it's prolonged. That's why it's important to get the patient to um, the OR so they can drain that fluid or blood off pericardial sac. And then anaphylaxis, everything shunts to the core, everything shuts down. You had that repetitive over and over with Miss Alexis's um, immunity lecture. So all of these affecting vasculature, compromising vasculature perfusion leads to pre-renal acute kidney injury. Intrarenal. Drugs, God bless you. Drugs and nephrotoxins. I'll go over this. I have another slide with specifics about some me of medications. Acute pulmonary nephritis, beta hemolytic strep. You see that a lot in peas. Um, what are you going to do for that patient? Antibiotics. Yeah, antibiotics. You have to stop the inflammatory process. Strep, I think, if I remember correctly, strep responds to uh, penicillins and cephalosporins. I could be wrong. But go with whatever your doctor orders. 
autoimmune disorders. I talked about this last week. Um, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, any uh, sarcoidosis, any autoimmune disease that affects the glomerula, glomeruli. Tubule crystal formation. We talked about this last week too. What's the disease you see with that? Gout, right? Uric acid buildup leading to crystals. Other things, tubule crystal, tubule crystal formation. Think about your medication compatibility. If you infuse two meds that are incompatible, you get crystals. It can go in the brain, can go in the kidney. So please check your compatibility with your IV medications and IV fluids. Myoglobin, hemoglobin, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Hemoglobin, what disease can you think of that can block the blood flow in the glomeruli? Sickle cell. Sickle cell, thank you. It's gold star. <laughs> We still see it at university on telemetry. What, what do you what do you do for a patient with sickle cell crisis? Pain, Pain. Pain. fluids, Pain. ambulation. What did you say? Those things. Those things. Oxygen. Oh, uh, two. Yeah, because the cells are sickle, the heme is compromised. O2. Oh, two. Very sick patients. <coughs> Myoglobin, myoglobin is muscle cell breakdown leading to very large molecules and when they're trying to perfuse, they can't get through the glomerular vessels until the glomeruli start, the glomeruli start failing and then the big molecules start passing. That's when you see Coca-Cola colored urine. I have a picture of it. Mm -hmm. Um, hypertension, hypertension banging on the, my, another problem with microcirculation, diabetes too, affecting microcirculation in the kidneys. So intrarenal direct assault on the kidney and the nephrons and the glomeruli. Um, Postrenal, benign prostatic hypertrophy. You wonder why your little grandpa's little, little, Little daddies go to the bathroom two, every two hours, three hours, it's prostate. Urolithiasis, stones in the genitourinary tract. Blocked catheters, oh my gosh. You ever walk in the ICU and you see the catheter bag laying on the floor and it's filled up, it looks like a soccer ball? Mm -hmm. Don't be that nurse. Because if it can't go in the bag, it's just gonna go retroperitoneal back up into the ureters and cause hydronephrosis. Mm. <clears throat> That's some other grads. Leave those <laughs> bags unfilled. It's too lame. Huh? It's too lame. It's what? Too lame. Too lame. They have two lane school they have a new school of nursing. I think that's what she's saying, right? Yes. yes. Tulane's got a school of nursing too? Do. It's crazy. It, it, it's, I don't even understand it. I don't know. Students have options. <laughs> We're a great option because you get out 72 credit hours. But then you still need to go. Please go back and get your BSNs. Mm -hmm. I have friends my age who didn't go back. They can't get jobs. They have the associate degree or I have one friend, she just went back and finished her BSN like a year and a half ago. I've been hounding her for 20 plus years. Go back, go back, go back. And she did everything but that. She finally went back, now she's retiring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Take a break, go back, get your BSN. It ain't as hard as this, I promise. You just gotta learn how to write papers. All right, enough of that. That sounds worse. Blocked catheters, wait, what? So that's the worst. It is the worst. <laughs> NP school is close second. That was the worst, bad too. Um, all right, trauma, crush injuries. A lot of people overlook the bladder in lower abdominal or abdominal trauma. Don't forget the little bladder. Hematuria is never good, normal. If you have hematuria, they need to Further exploration. Neurogenic bladder. This is something that 
doctors stand at attention to. You, you got a neurogenic bladder? What, what, what? Because it's very rare. I don't know exact mechanism, but if you have a neurogenic bladder, you need to see a urologist. Usually it's a UTI. It's not neurogenic bladder. And for ladies, postmenopausal, the incidence of UTIs climbs. So what you can do is topical estrogen, and then you don't have UTIs anymore. Especially uh, other folks. Anyway, enough of that. So topical Premarin cream is great. It's expensive, but it works. You don't want a UTI. UTI goes into urosepsis, you're dead. That, a lot of elderly women, that's what the cause of death is, urosepsis. <coughs> All right, GU tumors, genitourinary tumors, uh, extra renal tumors like cervical cancer, uterine fibroids, ovarian tumors, all that can compress on the ureters. Um, any kind of urinary stricture. Uh, you see that urinary strictures sometimes in pediatric population. Maybe they have abnormal uterine length. But those of you going into peds, it's a thing. All right. And the nephrotoxic drugs. <laughs> Tylenol, acetaminophen, while being hepatotoxic, can also be um, nephrotoxic in high doses. Anesthetics can be nephrotoxic. Antifungals. Who, who watched The Last of Us on HBO? The funguses are going to kill us all, you know. That's, that's the thing, you know. Doomsday, God bless you, doomsday predictions. The funguses are going to kill us. So Amphotericin B is a very powerful antifungal. There's others as well. What is it? Um, Diflucan? I can't remember what the generic is. Fluconazole. Thank you. Flagyl, all those. Amphotericin B is hardcore. You protect yourself if you do infuse or ever those amphotericin Bs can lead to kidney problems. Antivirals, acyclovir. Aminoglycosides. Who gave gentamicin in peas? Anybody did a rotation through NICU or gave gentamicin to a PD patient? It's a good drug for peds, but there's two issues with gent gentamicin. One, it's nephrotoxic. And what's the other thing with gentamicin? Oh, Hearing. It, it destroys the otic nerve. I forget which one it is. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, cranial nerve. I don't know. We don't teach that anymore, so. Um, so topramycin, you may encounter that if you work in orthopedics. Topra is a great drug for osteomyelitis. I know when we have patients who have knee replacements or uh, hip replacements that fail or they develop osteomyelitis, they'll take the, they'll take the, um, the, the prosthetic out and put tobramycin down the intramedullary canal. Oh, but it can be nephrotoxic. Um, chemo agents. For those of you going into uh, oncology nursing, Chemo agents can be nephrotoxic. Um, oncology nursing, the Oncology Nurses Society, ONS, has a <coughs> great website with tons of resources. It's even <coughs> for people who, um, God bless you, who aren't in oncology nursing. <coughs> so, um, yeah, please be careful if you go into that nursing specialty. Heavy metals, what's a heavy metal that's endemic to New Orleans? Anybody? Lead. Lead. Lead, um, lead exposure. It's because the housing stock in New Orleans is so old, they stopped putting lead in um, paint in the 1970s, but because of old housing stock, and especially after Katrina, 
when the housing stock was destroyed, all this lead went into the ground, into the topsoil. And so what's the outcome if a, if a child is exposed, children are outside, they're playing in the dirt. What's the outcome if a child has exposure to lead? Does anybody know what body system is affected? <laughs> yep, the brain, intracranial re regulation. It stunts the sensorum. It even mimics developmental delay in children. So what do you give this child who has lead poisoning? Chelation Chelating agents, yes. They bind to the lead and help the patient excrete them through the GI system, through the bowels. So those of you who are going to work in children's or any other pediatric centric facility, read up on that, <laughs> heavy metal exposure. Yeah, Another they, one that they tell you to only eat one can of tuna fish a week, what's that one? Mercury, mercury exposure. Uh, I don't see that as much here, but it's a thing. IV contrast dyes. What's the allergies? Iodine. Shellfish and iodine. It's weight dependent. An average size adult can get 200 cc vials. That's it. What happens after if you go work in a interventional radiology or invasive lab and you're pushing a lot of contrast dye? <coughs> What happens after the procedure? What do you have to tell the patient to do? Drink, drink, drink lots of fluids. Um, hydrate, hydrate. Um, also in conjunction with metformin, this can lead to the two of them potentiate each other if you don't hold metformin in patients and then the kidneys can shut down. It's lactic, lactic acidosis that develops. So be judicious if you give an IV contrast dye. Uh, working in the OR, I've had surgeons, we put a lot of contrast dye on the surgical field and they inject it. They do fluoroscopy to do whatever examination they do. And I need more, uh, I need more dye. I'm like, you've reached your limit. You can't give any more for this patient. You know, advocate for your patient. I'd rather have a mad surgeon than a sick patient, you know. Lithium. Lithium is a great drug for bipolar, but they don't give it, use it as much because of the narrow therapeutic window. Let me see, I can't remember what it is. It's 0 0.6 to 1.2 is the, is the therapeutic window for lithium levels, okay? Um, if it's too much, that can go into uh, nephrotoxicity. There's other meds, I don't know, I'm not a psych nurse, I'm not up on current meds, but there's other meds that have replaced lithium. But lithium is a really good drug, but you just have to be mindful, for those of you going in the site, you have to watch the levels. What were the levels again? 0.6 to 1.2. I'm not testing you on that, that's a nice to know. Methotrexate. Um, Y'all see those uh, ads on TV for Enbro, for psoriatic arthritis? Well, anytime you see an ad on TV promoting a drug, it, it tells you the drug is ex it prohibitively expensive. And so my brother has psoriatic arthritis and he works with his hands. If he didn't take methotrexate, he couldn't work. He would be, you know. So, he tried Embrel, couldn't afford it, you know, that, that pharmacological donut hole that you can't get out of. You dig out of it in November, and then in January, the donut hole opens up again, right, for coverage, insurance coverage of pharmacological treatments. So he takes methotrexate. It's cheap. Every Sunday night, it will. It has some physical lethargy type of effects, but every three months, he has to go in and get a BMP done to check his kidney function. So methotrexate is a good drug. It, it's considered a chemo agent. 
to pill, but watch your patients. If you are doing intake and triage, you've got to be really specific. What meds are you on? What, what's going on here? What's going on there? And write it down. NSAIDs. NSAIDs are really, really good, but NSAIDs are very, very problematic. <clears throat> Only for you short term. We had a family friend who took ibuprofen daily, 18 to 24 pills, years, and she wound up going into um, <coughs> kidney failure and on dialysis. And she was a nurse. Of course, this was 20 years ago. And you, if you have pain, you have to find out what the source of pain is and go to a doctor and figure it out so you can get off of NSAIDs. Ibuprofen and other things problematic with NSAIDs. A lot of them have a sodium molecule attached. That's chemistry. Y'all don't have to take chemistry, but that's the mechanism. And sodium does what to perfusion? <clears throat> You're holding on to fluid. Your blood pressure goes up. So there's cardiovascular effects with NSAIDs. Meloxicam, I tore my meniscus in my left knee in May, and so I went to the doctor, meloxicam's a great <coughs> drug, it works even better than naproxen. Went through PT, I didn't have surgery, you don't need to have surgery, I had PT and the knee's better. But I went back for the follow-up, the doctor said, I said, I'm still taking the meloxicam. He's like, what? And he's like, you can stop it now. Mm -hmm. And I was on it for like two and a half months. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I better stop it. <laughs> so that's, that's a thing. Ketorolac too, Toradol, that's an NSAID. We give Ketorolac a lot right at the end of cert different, certain kinds of surgical procedures, ortho, whatnot, but that's a short term. So if you have inflammation, an NSAID, an anti-inflammatory is good, 7 days, 14 days, it'll help it, it put out the fire is what the, the, um, the PA told me when I went to the orthopedic doctor this summer. It puts out the fire, but don't keep, don't drown it with water or else you're going to have problems. Pesticides and fungicides can be nephrotoxic. And vancomycin. Let me tell you a story about vancomycin. A big corona. If you're looking at your MAR and your patient's on vancomycin or you have an order for vancomycin, you need to sit up and pay attention. Vancomycin's a really, really good drug, but it's very, very harmful. So, Think of a patient who comes in with an infection. It, it's a broad spectrum, it kills a lot of bugs, but you've probably seen this in your MAR and in your orders. Vancomycin gets a loading dose, 1,750 milligrams. They get two doses. Then they drop it down to 1,500. Two doses. Oh, bless you. Then they drop it down to 1,250. Then down to 1,000. But in Epic, Every time they change the dose, it falls off the mar. So you may have a three-day weekend, and you come in, and you give it 1,000 milligrams, <laughs> but then on the, you check your kidney function, your creatinine's climbing, your GFR is dropping. What's going on? Look at the chart. What is, could be causing this? You can go back. You have to scroll back day to day and look for the completed meds, look for the discontinued dosages. And what you think might be the second dose of 1,000 milligram vancomycin is actually the sixth dose, and nobody caught it. It's a glitch in Epic, and when you start nursing, find out what your glitches are, where, where you have stuff that you have to pay particular attention to. So you send in a trough, Oh God, when did we do a trough? Okay, today's the 20th. Last time we did a trough was the 15th of 
October, we better send a trough in. And you send it in and the trough is 28. Are you gonna hang that bank? No. Don't be that nurse that kills those kidneys. There's other stuff that goes on with vancomycin. Anybody see a patient who's had red man syndrome? Mm -hmm. It's gnarly. It's like an overhaul body rash. Elevated rash, pinpoint. Are you gonna continue giving the bank? No. no. Call the doc, we need to find something else. The most dire emergency, I mean, kidney failure is pretty significant, is, um, but the worst one is Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Have y'all seen that? Mm -hmm. That is the epidermis completely detaches from the body and sloughs off. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a second degree burn all over the body. There's varying fate, you know, e extremes of it, but I saw an uh, extreme one time, this young woman, she was 35 years old, total body skin slough, it was horrible. We couldn't treat her, they had to ship her to Houston and I don't even know if she survived. She, she was young, she was 35, she was hanging in there, but you know, you lose all that protection when you lose your dermis. So vancomycin's hardcore. They, I'm sure they get a bunch of black box warnings, yes. Uh, what dose do you get the trough normally, like if they're just starting today? It depends on what the doctor orders. It could be weight dependent. They could order, I, I, the most I've seen is 1750, 1750 milligrams of bank, which usually in a 500 cc bag, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, I've seen 1500, I've seen 1000. It just depends, but if you have a question, look back and go back in your MAR. It takes time, but does that answer your question? No. <laughs> no, Kathy, I, I misunderstood you. I'm just saying, like, uh, say they start the vein today. Mm -hmm. I know they do the trough before they start it, but like, I don't or think they do it. What they do it they 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 they're supposed to draw it 30 minutes before, before they, they uh, 30, 30, 30 minutes before they give the bank. You you draw the trough. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. asking what the normal trough is? Like, no, the, like how often they're usually every every before every fourth, every fourth, 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 fourth dose. dose. Okay, that was what I was. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the range is 10 to 20, the therapeutic range, okay? But yeah, I don't know, do they do a trough before you start the bank? I wouldn't think so because the patient is, is not used to getting vancomycin instead of the fourth dose. So if you have a resident, because it's July 4th and the residents are clueless, call them up and say, hey, I think you need to put in an order for trough on this patient. That's being an advocate. Doctors. They probably do the same with nurses. All right, rhabdomyolysis. Coca-Cola color urine. This is breakdown of muscle cells into myoglobin, which are big stonking molecules that will spill into the urine when the kidney shut down, same as protein. So muscle cell breakdown, what, what, what would cause that? Overexertion, so what are some examples of overexertion? Too much exercise. What's that? A lot of exercise, think gym enthusiasts. What else? Immobility. Immobility could, like if an uh, elderly person gets a fall, right. Um, so what it could else? be like something at work, like if a welder or some shipyard guy. Roofers, mm -hmm. firefighters out west, they're in all that gear and really have to stay hydrated. Gym enthusiasts, military, August, they're packing on 40 pound packs and doing 20 mile runs. Drug abusers, they don't wanna hydrate, they don't wanna eat, so they forget to eat, they forget to drink, and they show up in rhabdo. Elderly, they fall. <clears throat> crush injuries, crush injuries that can release a lot of myoglobin, like a motorcycle accident, a motor vehicle accident, seizures. All right, so what do you think the acid base 
um, status of the unification in rhabdo? Metabolic acidosis. What do you think the potassium is going to be? High. Very high. So what's the first line thing you can give to help lower the potassium? Insulin and D50. 10 units of insulin, an ampule of D50. What else are you going to give them? How are you going to flush this out? Fluids. Fluids. Lots of fluids. Lots of fluids. 200 cc's an hour, five bags a day. 250 cc's an hour, six bags a day. Flush it out. If their acidosis is bad enough, what else can you give them? An ample what? Bicarb. Bicarb. You want to promote diuresis. Remember, the ideal urine output should be light straw colored to clear. All right? Dark orange. Make sure you're hydrating. IV fluids, bicarb. Okay, what if your patient, you've given them D50, you've given them insulin, you can't get that potassium down. They have uncontrolled hyperkalemia. What's the next step? Thank you. Drop a line, send them to dialysis. Triple lumen or a trialysis catheter or a dual lumen catheter. They're usually very big catheters and usually they're white. You can tell. Yes. At what point would you do that? Like how long would you give the fluids time to work before you do that? I don't know. I would say maybe 24 hours. Okay. <laughs> maybe, you know, if you start seeing cardiac changes on the, on the EKG, you know. Probably sooner than later. Maybe, yeah, definitely. It's not something you would wait three days, four days for. It's within, I would say, 24 hours. I don't know precisely, and that would be the doctor's call. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing serial BMPs and your K is still stuck at 6.5 after the third one, mm -hmm. and you've given two rounds of D50 and insulin, it's like, Trying okay, to something's up, so. going on here. We need to... So where do you think this patient's going to be? You think this patient's going to be on the floor? Mm -hmm. They need one-to-one, one, one-to-two mm -hmm. attention in a, in a critical care unit. Or the ED. But ED is a... Yes, ma'am. And dialysis comes to us. In the portable <laughs> dialysis? Oh, nice. yeah. They, like, they're there every day. You yeah. see them every day. Um, they do have portable hemodialysis machines. Mm -hmm. I know at UMC, inpatient dialysis is on the second floor by um, the ED. So, all right, any other questions about rhabdo? All right, the phases. What's causing this? We just went over all the causes. A, a list of causes, it could be more than that. So then when the kidneys check out, they go into the oliguric phase. The oliguric phase lab markers are equivalent to what you see in chronic kidney disease, all right? The oliguric phase labs are equivalent to what you see in chronic kidney disease, but after the patient is treated for whatever's causing it, the patients will start recovering and the lab markers will normalize again. That's the difference with AKI and chronic kidney disease. All right? Therefore, oliguria, chronic kidney disease, what do you expect to be elevated? Potassium. What's that? Potassium. Say that again? Potassium, what else? BUN, B -U -N. what else? Creatinine, Creatinine. one more. Oh, wait, phosphorus. 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 What would you expect to be low? GFR. Um, GFR. GFR. Um, GFR. Low, yeah, GFR. Okay, GFR. What else? 
Sodium. Sodium, what else? Calcium. Well, calcium. No, not potassium. Calcium. 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 I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What do the kidneys produce that help with hemoglobin? Oh, so the H and H will be low. The bicarb. Bicarb will be low because kidneys produce bicarb. And if the kidneys are impaired, they won't be able to produce it, hence metabolic acidosis. And then in the urine, what are you going to see spilling in the urine? Protein. Protein. Proteinuria. All right? Those labs are equivalent to CKD, and I'll repeat them again when we get to CKD. All right, the other issue with the oliguric phase, intake does not match output. Say they take in two liters, 2,000 mils, and they only have about 350 output. That's oliguria, all right? You have a mismatch in I and O, okay? Make sure to pay attention to your I and O, especially your patients with kidney disease. With the fluid retention, in med surge, we do focused assessments. Whatever's going on with the patient, plus the focused assessment, you always do cardiac and lungs. Right? So therefore, in fluid retention, what are going to be your manifestations in your cardiac and respiratory? Crackles, the S3. 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 And I've got my hearing aids on today. I'm sorry, it's not you, it's me. S3, the ventricles take an extra squeeze to squeeze out the extra volume. So lub dub dub, lub dub dub. Has anybody ever listened to S3, heard of S3? Yeah. Once you hear it, you'll never forget it. Lub dub dub, lub dub dub. What about here? Oh, Jamie. Jamie, Jamie. Fluid retention, crackles, S3, shortness of breath. Maybe even um, frothy sputum. So you've corrected the problem that's causing this. All agiric phase is going into the diuretic phase. Urine output up to 10 liters a day. You have rapid fluid loss. So what is your main concern with the diuretic stage? Oh, Hypovolemia. What is that gonna, how is that gonna affect your blood pressure? It's gonna drop it. What's your blood heart rate gonna go up? Okay? So there's a parallel with the, all, the diuretic phase and diabetes insipidus. Just remember, DI does not have the kidney. I'm not trying to confuse y'all. There's a lot of parallels between Elimination, kidney disease, and um, metabolism, SIDH and DI. Just when you study it, discriminate. Right? So rapid fluid loss, decreased cardiac output, blood pressure, hypotension. But the problem is the patient's not fully recovered kidney function because they still can't concentrate urine. They're just peeing out water. 1.005 to 1.030 is urine specific gravity. I'm not testing you on that. Ms. Sean might. Mm -hmm. But once in the recovery phase, they start concentrating urine again, things get better. All is well. You don't have an amount that approximately they could be the what? urinating, like how much mm -hmm. they could be approximately. How much depends on whatever the patient has, depends on the size of the patient. Um, maybe look at your pre, maybe look at your oliguric intake and output, and then once they get to diuretic, you know, little old lady is going to put out a lot less than biker dude, you know? Depends. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no one, what, no one parameter to pigeonhole them in. So.
So history, potential causes, nephrotoxins, is it pre-renal, is it intra-renal, is it post-renal? All your diagnostics, they may do a kidney biopsy if there is, um, if there is intra-renal damage. GFR, BUN, creatinine, potassium. Um, nursing management, drug therapy, nutrition. Okay, so if the patient's in the oliguric phase, what type of intake for nutrition do you expect them to be eating? What are they gonna limit? Protein. Protein. And Two to three ounces at a meal. It's just enough to fit in the palm of your hand. What else are you gonna restrict? Sodium. Sodium. Phosphorus. There's a big issue with phosphorus because phosphorus is in everything. We'll talk about that the next hour. You can try to limit it, but the other, the better treatment is to give them what? Phosphate products with meals. That's one of those things that has to be given with meals. And we'll go down that road. Um, Follow-up labs, dialysis, consult with a dietitian, daily weights, good teaching. Questions? Mm -hmm. Y'all take a break? Mm -hmm. <coughs>